the World Series winning uh, manager of the Cincinnati Reds back in the day. Uh, from my day of growing up, I loved Sweet Lou Pinola wearing the Yankee pinstripes. And, of course, Seattle fans know him as the manager of Ken Griffey Jr. for all those years here. Back again on the Rich Eisen Show. How are you, Lou? Rich, how are you doing? I'm uh, doing good. I'm, I'm out here on the golf course. <laughs> Where are you? Uh, what, uh, I'm here in, in Tampa, Florida. Fantastic. I play over at the Avila Country Club. It's really nice. Okay. Beautiful weather down here, too, so got no complaints. Fantastic. Well, I appreciate you taking the time before you're... Yeah. Uh, is your tea time? Are you out on the course right now, or you're getting set to I'm tea on off? the course. It's all right. Don't okay. worry about it. Fantastic. You're a good man. Thank you're a you. good man. I enjoy uh, talking to you. And I enjoy when you call in, Lou. That means so much to me. What, what were your thoughts on hearing that Ken Griffey Jr. is a baseball Hall of Famer? Well, I wasn't surprised, obviously. I was so happy to see that... Uh, he got such a, a, a high percentage of the vote, 99.3. I don't know who left him off the ballot, but uh, I'll tell you this. Uh, when I had him in Seattle, he was by far the best player in all of baseball. There wasn't anything this young man could do on the field. Uh, not only could he hit and hit for power, but he could play center field like one of God's angels, and he could run. Uh, this guy was a great player, and, and the thing that – made him a little different from the rest of the guys. He had a lot of fun playing. Mm -hmm. He played with confidence. Uh, he enjoyed coming to the ballpark every day. He enjoyed being in the lineup every day and helping the team win. Just a great choice. I couldn't be happier for uh, Junior. I couldn't be happy for his family. They're what, good people. What was he like to manage, to essentially know from your point of view, having seen as much as you've seen in the baseball game and knowing how special a talent he was, uh, well, as a manager, you know, as a manager, I enjoyed watching him play. Basically, uh, I just stayed out of his way. I put him in the lineup uh, every day in the three hole and uh, and let him play. I mean, he uh, there's nothing, like I said, that he couldn't do on the field. And, you know, when I first joined the Mariners uh, in 93 in spring training, you hit these towering fly balls that would just go out of the ballpark. And I said, boy, you know, this rare fried air and in Arizona, making that ball carry a little more. And the season starts, and everywhere we go, uh, the first month of the season, he's hitting these same balls, and they're going further. So I recognized very, very quickly that this young man was a special talent, uh, a special player, and that I would be very, very fortunate to, to have him on my roster managing him. Yeah, I've got Lou Pinella here on the Rich Eisen Show. What's your favorite moment from Junior? You got one? You know, uh, you know, my fa I, look. I, I, I can I can uh, uh, basically name a litany of, of great moments. But uh, you know, the thing that I remember the most about him is that uh, he played baseball with a, a reckless abandon. And I always used to tell him, especially in that kingdom with the walls and so forth. I tell him, Junior, uh, we can't have you hurt. When the ball goes off the wall, just let it go. And he'd say, I can't play that way, Skip. He says, uh, When I think I can make the play. Uh, I'm going to go out and, and make that play. And he made so many great plays. I mean, he made a play in Detroit one time in Tiger Stadium uh, in right center field. Uh, he must have snatched the ball eight or ten feet into the end of the stands. And, uh, but the problem was he got hurt a few times, too. But listen, uh, like I said, I mean, when I had him, uh, every day was a special treat. I mean, Weather. And I remember uh, the, the 95 playoff season when uh, we beat the Yankees mm -hmm. and, and uh, that 10th inning uh, double by Edgar and seeing uh, Junior just running the bases, scoring from first on a double to down the left field line and, and sliding in the home plate and all heck breaks loose. But uh, listen, I, I, I've been so fortunate in my managing career. I've managed some great players. Uh, last year I had Randy Johnson, uh, went into the Hall of Fame. Uh, I'm glad to see that Edgar Martinez is starting to get more recognition uh, 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 in, in the voting. And this year uh, with Junior is, is special. I mean, uh, uh, there there isn't anything that, uh, that that you can say about Junior except that he was the best player in baseball for a long, long time. He played a demanding position in center field. He played it with grace. He played it like one of God's angels, believe it or not. And at the same time, uh, with the bat, uh, he could beat you with a swing. He could beat you with uh, his legs. There isn't anything the man couldn't do. And, and to see him get into the Hall of Fame and and to uh, get the high percentage vote, uh, I'm so happy for he and his family. Yeah, and he did it in a spot 
um, look, um, Lou, I'm with Lou Pinella here on The Rich Eisen Show. You know, uh, Seattle was a place where Steinbrenner used to banish people, right? I mean, that was the way it <laughs> that, That's the way it was looked at in turn. It was a baseball Siberia until Junior yeah. U, Randy Johnson all came along. And yeah, we had, you know, it, it's. Yeah, we, we had good teams over there. We really did. You know, the amazing thing about it is we beat the Yankees in 95 to go to the American League Championship Series. Mm -hmm. And then I had some really good teams over there, and we could never beat the Yankees again, to much much to my chagrin. But what are you going to do? But I'll tell you what, Junior, yeah, listen, uh, special. Uh, that's the way to describe them. And what special, about? Special, special player, special person. Comes from an exceptional family. His father was a great player himself, Ken Griffey Sr. And I, I enjoyed, you know, the amazing thing is when I was at the Yankees, uh, his dad uh, was on that team. Yep. And also, I managed uh, his, his dad my first year in, in New York. And truthfully, uh, I, I got to see Junior firsthand because he'd come out and, and, and shag uh, in batting practice. He'd take batting practice before. And you could see that this young man was going to be special. And he was a number one draft pick. Uh, and what's amazing about the Hall of Fame is that uh, he's the first number one draft pick yep. uh, to make it. Uh, so. Uh, the Mariners did the right thing drafting him, and, and obviously uh, he did the rest on the field. Uh, just a just a great, great career, and, 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 and just such such fun. I remember I made a bet with him one time uh, uh, during the uh, um, college uh, basketball uh, playoffs, mm -hmm. and uh, I won the bet, and the bet was a steak dinner. Mm -hmm. And two days later, he comes into my office. He says, all right, I'm going to pay off your uh, steak dinner bet dinner uh, that, that I lost to you. He comes back about three or four minutes later with a big cow <laughs> in my office. And, uh, and uh, yeah, uh, the amazing, yeah. And, and the only problem is uh, the cow stunk up the place for, for about a week or so. But outside of that, that goes to show you the humor that he had and, and the fun that he had playing. <sighs> Oh, man. Lou Pinella here on the Rich Eisen Show. Pound the table for Edgar Martinez here, Lou. A lot of people think because he's a DH mostly um, that he doesn't deserve enshrinement recognition in a manner that people who used to hit like him normally would. What, what do you think about Edgar Martinez knowing hitting and well, managing Edgar, as well as you Edgar do? Edgar, basically, uh, when, I, when I went there in 93, he, he was my second hitter in the lineup and played third base. And as he got bigger and stronger, uh, we switched him to the DH spot. But let me tell you what, there wasn't a better right-hand hitter in the league. I, I used to think that Edgar and Jim Rice in Boston were the two best right-hand hitters uh, in, in the American League. And by far, Edgar's had the most productive uh, uh, DH career. Now, Ortiz with the Red Sox should be in the Hall of Fame also. And he's had another uh, great career in the DH spot. But look, in the American League, the, uh, the DH is an integral part of a lineup. Uh, you're going to hit, if you're good, three, four, five in that lineup. And actually, with, with Junior, I had my three hitter, but uh, Edgar became my, my fourth hitter. Then I had Jay Buhner in the fifth spot. So I had some thunder in the middle part of that lineup. And Edgar. Edgar was special with the bat. And a special person, too. And, and, you know, he's a hitting coach now for the Mariners. He's doing a heck of a job in that regard also. So mm -hmm. I'm hoping that over the next couple of years, uh, the, the, the sports writers continue to vote for him and, and, and he'll get into the Hall of Fame also because he should be. Uh, Lou, before I let you go uh, off to the golf course, you were the one in Cincinnati who succeeded Pete Rose as manager. What did you think of uh, Commissioner Manfred's decision to not revisit the Pete Rose ban on on um, for his career in baseball Lou well you know it's a tough situation for the commissioner and I I, I, I grant you that but at the same time I, I was disappointed uh, you know he was the all-time hit leader uh, in Major League Baseball uh, he played uh, the game the way it should be played uh, with hustle uh, uh, with pride he played the win and basically uh, when he started uh, betting on these games, he was a, uh, a, 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 a the manager, and he wasn't going to make it to the Hall of Fame as a manager. But as as a player, uh, you would think that his accomplishments on the baseball field would get him in. And I'm hoping that uh, down the line, sometime uh, that that uh, he gets his recognition too. Uh, you know, I, I I didn't know Pete very well at all, but I've gotten a chance to, to talk to him. Uh, Many times uh, uh, in the past uh, ten years or so, 
and he loves the game of baseball. He's a he's a baseball junkie. Uh, uh, he 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 he, uh, he follows it religiously. And uh, look, the things he did on the baseball field speak for themselves. So let's see what happens with that regard. But I I, I can tell you that the commissioner is, uh, is 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 in a tough position with this thing, and uh, and hopefully uh, hopefully somebody will change their mind. Lou, I love talking to you. Lo love talking with you. You are you're you're the best, and I you know I'm thrilled Thanks. that you were taking the time to to talk about one of your favorite players the day after he gets into the Hall of Fame. Go hit him uh, straight. I'm honored. I'm honored. I'm honored to uh, be able to talk about him, and at the same time, uh, uh, I'm so happy for him and 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 for his accomplishments and, and for his recognition. And I look forward to. Uh, July when he gets inducted, I'll be there to uh, shake his hand and give him a hug. Fantastic. Go peg it up. What's the Lou Pinella golf game look like these days? What does it look like? Well, it's a 12 handicap, and today I'm not playing to it too well, but uh, <laughs> I, know, we still, I still have 12 holes to go, so okay. let's see what happens. Fantastic. Lou, thanks for taking the time Thank in the middle you. of your round to do that. It's a pleasure. Thank you so much, Brett. Oh, nice talking to Same you. Same here. That's Lou Pinella. Come on, man. The Rich Eisen Show, weekdays at noon Eastern on audience.